Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio. So today, we need to look at some stunning secret rares that are coming around for the Pokemon card 151 set, which is releasing at the end of the week in Japan. Come back on Thursday, where I can show you all of the secret rares. But we've got some new ones today. They are absolutely stunning, and not only that, but they also tell us quite a bit about some other cards that are coming. I cannot tell you all of the secret rares yet, but we are given a bunch of information here. We can deduce quite a lot from just these cards being added, which is lovely. But let's start off with the one we all knew was coming. It was Mew. It was always going to be Mew. Mew is on the front of the pack. It's, it's Mew. We were always going to be getting a Mew. Now, we couldn't confirm it until it was actually shown off. Purely because we were in a weird situation where we had Zapdos. But if you look in terms of the set numbers. Well, Zapdos came before Mew. Because remember the set numbers here are not done by typing. They're done by Pokedex number. So, because we hadn't seen any card after Zapdos, we couldn't actually confirm whether there would be a Mew or not. Although we felt very, very confident. And now it has been confirmed, there is an alternate art, a special art rare, a special illustration rare of Mew. And I hope we can all agree that this is a stunning, stunning card. I love this. I think it's wonderful artwork. It's one of those weird ones where it's artwork where the Pokemon is very small. Where it's a very small part of the artwork. For me, the classic one of these will always be the Hyaganasuke Hoot Hoot. Which is a tiny part of the actual card. Despite it being a Hoot Hoot card. And yeah. This, I think we can just fit this into the pantheon of this kind of card. Although I will say, the Mew is at least quite a bit bigger than the Hoot Hoot was on its card. But, we've got the lovely Yoshida artwork here. We've got a bunch of people milling around. And we've got Mew just kind of doing its thing, floating along at the top. Lovely artwork. I think everyone's going to be very excited about it. And do remember, of course, that the Mew hit is a spectacular card because it's got that ability that once during your turn, you can draw until you've got three cards in your hand. It does not have to be active and it is not limited to once during your turn. It's once per Mew per turn, but it's not limited to once overall, which is brilliant. You can go very low hand size here and just use Mew to go nuts. And you've got an attack whereby you choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and copy it. But remember the rule, this has been the rule for a long time in the Pokemon TCG. Where you're copying attacks like this, if you need to have the energy, it will tell you you have to have the energy. If you don't have to have the specific energy... It won't say a word. The fact that it says copy, but it does not say you must have the correct amount of energy and type means you don't, which is lovely. So that's Mew, and that's lovely. We kind of knew this was coming. Now, unfortunately, in terms of sets, when you look down the set list, what comes after special art rare Pokemon is special art rare supporters and gold cards. We've not seen any of them. Which means we have no idea how many there are. We have no idea what they are. We have to wait and see. If this follows a regular set, then we'll get at least a couple of special art rare supporters and free gold cards. But again, we don't have enough information to really make a determination. But what we do have is a couple of full art supporter cards. And they are beautiful. And they do confirm a couple of important things. But first, let's start off with Erica, I love this card. This is awesome. Uh, specifically, Erica's Invitation. Now, this is the one whereby you look at your opponent's hand. You put a basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent's bench. But then immediately switch it with their active Pokemon. Basically, what this card allows you to do is attack a Pokemon, in, a basic Pokemon, in your opponent's hand. Which is actually really huge if your opponent's got a tech Pokemon there waiting to play at the perfect time. Drappy on the classic example here. Drop it when it's the perfect time so your opponent can't KO it for two prizes first. Well, now you can get it out of their hand and then go after it. As a fun little side note here, 
Obviously, you can attack Pokemon on the field, and you can use bosses' orders to attack Pokemon if they're on the bench. We've got Echoing Horn, which allows you to bring them onto the field so that you can then attack them. And now we've got Erica's Invitation to attack Pokemon from the hand. And the only place Pokemon are safe from being KO'd now is the Lost Zone. You can get them on the field. You can get them on the bench. You can get them in the discard pile. You can get them in the hand. The only place they are safe is in the Lost Zone. Everywhere else, you can target them down and try and KO them. And I don't know why, but I just really appreciate that. That makes me pretty gosh darn happy. So we've got a lovely full art of that. It's probably fair to assume there's going to be a special art rare. Again, we would expect at least a couple, if not all four, coming in here. And the fact that they... I mean, firstly, it's Erica, right? One of the Gen 1 gym leaders, etc. But also... This is a card they've chosen to highlight early on. So I think it's probably fair to assume that this is going to be coming as a special art rare. The fact that they've shown off the full art for this one nice and early shows what they think about the card, which should show you its chances of getting a special art rare. Although again, that's unconfirmed. The other one they've shown us here is Giovanni specifically. We are talking about Giovanni's Charisma. And what we've got here is a supporter card that lets you put an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon back into their hand. If you do, then you attach one energy from your hand to your active Pokemon. Specifically on the Japanese card, it reads after this, but basically what it means, or after that, but basically what it means is you have to get rid of one of your opponent's energy in order to attach your own which is actually a pretty big deal honestly because it means that you cannot use this to accelerate energy turn one going second and donk unless your opponent has already attached an energy from their active or you can bring the bench that's got an energy on active to then remove the energy just an important ruling query but these are very important Gen 1 characters. They're Gen 1 gym leaders. They were always going to get full arts. I think the Erica is a lot cooler than the Giovanni, although the Giovanni is lovely. And this means that, well, I think they're getting special art rares. Like I say, unconfirmed, but I do think it's moderately likely. Although I do need to point out, it's not been that long since we got a full art Giovanni card. Back in Rebel Clash, which was the second of the Sword and Shield expansions, we got ourselves a full art Giovanni, and now in this special set coming after the second Scarlet and Violet expansion, we're getting ourselves another Giovanni. I just think that's pretty cool, honestly. If you're a Giovanni fan, you are eating well. No Rainbow Rare this time, so, you know, feel free to be upset about that. But what does this tell us? Well, it actually tells us a few things. For instance, we know that Erica's invitation is going to be the first full art. We know that for a fact, because in terms of the set numbers, Erica's invitation is the first supporter card in the set. And the full arts always follow the same numbering, the same order as the regular set. So we know Erica's number one, and incidentally, we know Giovanni is number two. They're 196 and 197. We know that after Full Art Supporters, we get to Special Art Rare Pokemon. That's just always the way it goes. And we know for a fact that the first Special Art Rare Pokemon is going to be Venusaur. Remember, they are done by set number, not by typing. Venusaur is the first EX in terms of set number. So again, we know for a fact that the first Special Art Rare is going to be Venusaur. Which means there are two spaces between Giovanni and Venusaur. And they have to be taken up with full art supporters. Because again, there is not going to be a special art rare before Venusaur. That's not possible. Venusaur's the first EX. And assuming they follow every other set they've done for ages, there's nothing between full art supporters and special art rare Pokemon. Which means both Daisy's Care and Bill's Transfer are going to be getting full arts. And I know we could have presumed that anyway, because most of the time, all the supporters get full arts. But there have been some supporters over the past couple of years that haven't. We now have it 100% confirmed. There is not... Well, okay, fine. 99.9% .9 confirmed. There is nothing else that makes sense. These have to be getting full arts. I have to get a full art Daisy's Care, because I have a kid called Daisy. 
But I really want a special art rare Daisy's Care. That would make me so happy. I showed Daisy Daisy's Care the other day. I told her it was the first Daisy Pokemon card they'd ever made. She got very, very excited. But there's one other thing we can learn here. You see, we now know that Erica is the first full art supporter card, and we know that it's number 196. We know that the final art rare card that we've been shown so far is Snorlax, which is 181. Now, the way it goes in sets is art rare Pokemon, full art Pokemon, full art supporter cards. That's just the way it generally tends to go. We know that Erica is the first full art supporter card. So we therefore know that there are 14 cards between Snorlax and Erica to be made up of extra artwork rares. Remember, Snorlax was the last one we'd seen, but there could have been more. And full arty X's. Well, if we look at this very handy little chart that the lovely Antoine Boulet has made, we know that there are 12 full art Pokemon, and it is very, very rare for a Pokemon not to get a full art. That basically never happens which means there are going to be 12 full art Pokemon. Which means there have to be two artwork rares after Snorlax. Because we know they're not full art supporters. Erica's the first one. We know there can't be more than 12 full art EXs because there aren't more than 12 EXs. So two out of Articuno, Moltres, the Dragonite line, and Mewtwo are going to be getting artwork rares. Now, you'll notice if you look at the Zapdos, Zapdos actually has all of the legendary birds on. So, I don't think the other legendary birds are going to get artwork rares. I think Zapdos is essentially taking it for the whole team. So, for that reason, I think, and this is just a prediction, but I think we're going to get a Mewtwo. I mean, does anyone think we're not getting a Mewtwo art rare? And then one of the Dragonite line. But we don't know exactly which one it's going to be. We'll have to wait and see, but I think one of the Dragonite line and Mewtwo is a pretty fair guess. Again, we know that there has to be two artwork rares, which are coming along after Snorlax, because there are 14 spaces between Snorlax and Erica, and there's only 12 full art Pokemon. They should all be getting one, that leaves two artwork rares. And that's what I mean when I said we could work a whole bunch of stuff out. On Thursday, we'll know the whole deal. But now we know a lot, and I'm excited. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about these cards. Tell me which cards you want to get secret rares. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. Oh, and of course, you can get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely It's a Coaster, who's been a supporter of us for a long time now, and is one of the most active people on the Discord. So shout out to them for the support, and for being awesome. But by far, the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.